Hello everyone, this is Adam Meister, the Bitcoin Meister, the Disrupt Meister. Remember to spread the word about this channel, subscribe, like, tweet. Uh, this is a preview of the weekend that's about to take place. It's Friday and a review of this crazy day in cryptocurrency land. Well, as we enter another weekend, we know what has happened the past three weekends. There have been major price spikes because of China and perhaps other factors. I'm going to make a prediction that by Monday morning, Bitcoin will be worth trading for $800. I think we're going to hit the $800 mark thanks to China. Right now, I think we're below $750 because of all the excitement from today that I will soon cover. I want to remind everyone that on Sunday night, it will be Monday morning in old Australia and they will start the 24,000 Bitcoin auction and they will auction off the Bitcoin in groups of 2,000 Bitcoin so different people can win each group or someone might win every single one and I believe that is what will happen. Um, it will take two days. We are not going to find out probably until Wednesday morning. It will end Tuesday night our time, but we're not going to find out till Wednesday morning. Who knows who, what information will even leak by then. I will predict that the Bitcoin will be sold for $1,000 each and that that could leak and it might boost the market up to that. But I am pretty sure someone is willing to pay that much uh, for 24,000 Bitcoin, pay $1,000 each. I, I think an entity of some sort will want to get their hands on Bitcoin that badly. By the way, I watched Bloomberg the other day and I don't, you know, it was on the, it was on the internet. I'm not a mainstream guy, but you, 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 Google, um, you Google Bitcoin and yeah, you see a Bloomberg thing, why not? Anyway, they covered the halving and that was part of my prediction back in January that we would get to $700 because of the halving and that mainstream media would start to cover the halving. Now I was wrong about, well, hopefully I'm wrong about one thing. I thought by the end of this year, we'd be back down to 600 again. So, hey, I'm not perfect. Let's hope that doesn't happen. I don't want that to happen, but that is what I predicted originally. If you do watch that classic video of mine from January, but I am proud about the predictions that I made. Um, speaking about uh, things you can watch or listen to, I listened to Andy Hoffman's podcast yesterday he works for Miles Franklin. You can get precious metals for him, from him. And again, I'm talking about him a lot these days as I found out that he likes Bitcoin. He's one of the first major gold people to get on the Bitcoin train. And his podcast is excellent. It talks about how people should, people should have gold, but not everyone can have gold. It's just because there's a lot of reasons. If you're in the middle of Africa, you can't just get gold. Let's, I'm just giving an example. You're in the middle of Paraguay. But you could get Bitcoin. So Bitcoin is a store of value, a store of wealth for everyone. People who cannot get their hands on gold. Because not everyone's going to be able to get their hands on gold, he points out. He, he wants everyone to get their hands on gold, but no, that's not going to happen. Um, another thing that he points out that I have pointed out here before, and I, I, I want to be very specific about it, is to follow China's economic lead. Uh, the, I don't like the Chinese government at all. The Chinese people, on the other hand, are good people. And since they are under this, at times, uh, very repressive regime, they go out of their way to preserve their wealth. They get into gold, they get into Bitcoin. And the government itself buys a lot of gold, and they're probably going to buy a lot of Bitcoin too. I wouldn't be shocked. Um, now, while they are focusing on preserving wealth, getting rich, the average American wouldn't have a clue about these type of things. Not at all. So, again, the government of China is bad. But we have this mindset that we, oh, it's, China's crappy. They make crappy products. Why listen to them? No, we really should be waking up to what's going on with this Bitcoin in China, okay? And again, you've seen it the last three weeks. I've been talking about it over and over again. There's no shame in following the lead of the Chinese businessman. And 
they picked it right before. They picked it right with Vancouver. Um, I think they're on a good streak here. I think since they're in desperate straits sometimes that they're forced to make the right decision. We, we live very comfortably here in America. We're not forced to make these decisions. So let's, let's pay attention to what's going on in China. Always pay attention. If, if you learn one thing from this channel, pay attention to what they're, what they're doing over there. Anyway, the, the Dow, the, the famous, infamous now Ethereum spin-off, whatever you want to call it, a product that came from Ethereum, based around Ethereum. It, last night, I guess it was around 3 a.m., 2 a.m. on the East Coast. I have no idea. I was asleep. So we woke up to this. Everything had dropped in price. Ethereum, Bitcoin even, too, because people, the Dow got hacked. And I don't even know if that's the correct term for it, but someone was stealing those Dow tokens, which, which have value. And we and everyone just panicked. Um, Bitcoin rebounded. Ethereum went down even more because this involves Ethereum, and it showed some weaknesses that everyone had had mentioned before. Uh, with Ethereum and kind of next to Ethereum too, everyone knew that these spinoffs. This had been spoken. Not everyone, but people had spoken about it. That in terms of code and everything, how strong it, it, it they were was questionable. If some. If something like this could happen, it would hurt Ether, Ethereum. And sure enough, it, they had a weak project. It was hyped up. Someone hacked it, and it did it hurt Ethereum's reputation. And now the, the leader of Ethereum, since they have a leader, is being questioned on what he's going to do. If there's going to be a hard fork, how can you correct this? And it, it shows that maybe Ethereum isn't, uh, that it is centralized, and it's not decentralized. And, you know, it, it's not immutable. All these questions are coming in because of this side project that really, it, Ethereum was not hacked. And now the, some of the media people are saying Ethereum was hacked because they don't understand it. And I'm not an Ethereum hater. I'm trying to defend Ethereum that it was not hacked. But you can see how this can spiral out of control. And this is something we knew. And this is something people, some people were worried about with Ethereum when comparing Ethereum and Bitcoin saying Ethereum's the next big thing. And maybe Ethereum is going to be a very big thing here. Um, I, I think Ethereum still to this day, um, when all this settles, and I, it, they better not do this hard fork uh, type of thing and try to get the funds back from the person who stole them. That would be very bad, okay? They, they should not, that will hurt Ethereum, okay? But if they don't do that and they just do nothing, they, should, they don't need a bailout, that would be a bailout. They, they should do nothing Ethereum is worth, you know, between 2% and 3% of a Bitcoin. Just like I believe Litecoin should be around 1%. There should be a penny version of Bitcoin. I think that's what Litecoin is. Could be a backup. This is very much like Bitcoin, Litecoin. And Ethereum could be this cool new thing that's a little different that does all these different things. And it would be around 3% of it. A Bitcoin, maybe between two and three percent, maybe more than three percent. I don't know. That's the market has priced it around two percent. Now it's below two percent after this, after this panic that's that's going on out there. And anyway, this is an opportunity for Litecoin to step up and say that hey, we're, we're simple. We don't do all these Ethereum things. We don't have to worry about all of this. And by the way, again, Ethereum went down pretty low today. Then it kind of it crashed, went back, went back and forth, and now it's low again. But Ethereum has some big players that are interested in it, okay? We've all heard about the, this, rumors, Wall Street type people. I don't even know. Who knows how true it is? But we're going to soon see how big these players are, okay? If this thing totally bounces back really fast during a still controversial period, then they've got some really big uh, players out there behind them. Uh, I want to also mention quickly, you know, uh, and this is going to be another video, I have a, like a rule. It's called Adam's final product rule. If you want something out there, if you want Bitcoin, you want the final product. You want Bitcoin. You don't want Bitcoin mining. You don't want cloud this, cloud that. You want Bitcoin. There's no need to complicate it. We'll do another video on that. But it's, you want the final product always. Anyway, there's been an incredible volume on uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum. Um, people flocked to Bitcoin in panic when they were selling the Ethereum, which is a good a good sign that Bitcoin is safety. 
and people aren't going into the dollar as much as they used to. Um, you never know what a week and a weekend is about to get totally crazy like this in Bitcoin land. So who knows what this weekend is going to bring? I think it'll bring $800. I'm Adam Meister. Take care.